Well, thank you for coming on my show, Mr. Herb. Oh, it, it's it's my pleasure. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm sure you remember this is the third time we've we've talked now. Yes. Yeah. And you said you went to my YouTube channel, which I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, I, she said something about she said method method actors scare me. <laughs> oh yes, Caitlin. Yes, actors, Caitlin. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and and I'm I'm almost ashamed to admit she was uh, talking about you know crying, and I've actually I've never had a role where I had to cry, but she talked about a tear stick, and I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> I thought. Wow, how, how long has that a, a tear stick been a thing? Yeah. Right. Well, so I right. actually learned something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk about you in, in space and mm -hmm. astronauts and everything. Mm -hmm. I know a lot mm -hmm. of people, they know about you. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about more as yourself mm -hmm. um, being in this, you know, in NASA career before you get into acting so let's 100 percent talk about nasa here you you um when you talk came on my show the first time you knew the apollo 13 crews mm -hmm. and let's let's go back in history so on that day um how did you you said you met them yeah. and and can you tell everybody in the audience um what led up to the incident on the apollo 13 well, okay, so yeah, let me let me back up a little even a little further even. So that was uh, April of 1970, and I had just turned 18, and um, I had a, and I lived just a few miles from the. It was the Manned Spacecraft Center now. It's the Johnson Space Center today, uh, and so. Uh, and I, again, I grew up in the area, in the in the community there. And so I, I had a, a part-time job with the ABC TV covering. They would send uh, their crews down from New York, where their headquarters are, and send the crew down to, to Houston. And they would rent a mobile home, a trailer, and set it up on site. Uh, that And that would be their studio. You know, they had a camera and a desk and a backdrop and... And so anyway, the, the reason they hired me was back then, you know, there was no such thing as the Internet and and uh, videotape was in its very early days. And so the, you didn't have any, you know, large file transfer capabilities like you do today. So anyway, if you uh, filmed a, a an interview with an astronaut or a flight director or something like that in Houston, you had to physically move the film from Houston to New York so it could be. Uh, broadcast on TV. And so they hired me twice a day to drive the about a hundred mile round trip from uh, NASA to the Interna Intercontinental Airport on the other side of Houston. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm 18 years old working for ABC TV covering the Apollo. I actually worked Apollo 11, Apollo 12, Apollo 13. I'd gone away to college for Apollo 14. Then I came back and worked Apollo 15 and two of the Skylab missions and so so i was actually when the the accident happened it was a uh an oxygen tank ex, uh, exploded in the command module on about halfway to the moon and you know it was um just a a, a kind of a freak accident there was some mm -hmm. like a you know problem with the shielding of the some wiring or something like that and it set off a little you know spark and and exploded the the oxygen tank and so I was, I was working, this, this was about 10 o'clock at night or something like that. And, and uh, they had just finished a, a TV transmission and uh, so, and covering it with the, the news media. I mean, I wasn't driving back and forth to the airport at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. at night, but I was doing other things. Uh, and so I was there on site and when the accident happened, uh, as you can imagine, no one in the news media slept that night no one went home <laughs> you know it was just constant news and update and status until you know sometime the following and i think that was the first time in my life that i'd gone all night without ever going to bed uh but so anyway yeah uh uh that's that's what was happening back then and so then what i think what you were kind of referring to uh, again i did meet all of them but i, I got to work with uh fred hayes who was the the lunar module pilot, although he never got to fly the lunar module, 
uh, you know, back in the uh, uh, 1980s, which is a, a whole other story. Right. And if you don't mind me talking about in the, in the movie Apollo 13, but one of the astronauts, supposedly he had um, the disease and then end up end up being he didn't have it, you know, and um, and he later if you can correct me, he later went on Apollo 14. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it was, it was, uh, uh, um, oh, I can't even remember his name now. One of the, one of the three crewmen, um, uh, that I think it was mumps or measles and he, he had been exposed to it. And I mean, it was literally like a couple of days before they were supposed to launch. And so, NASA couldn't take the risk of, of putting him in a, a small capsule sitting side by side with two other men for, you know, 10 days in space or whatever it was going to be, you know, in case he had actually, you know, caught it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and you're right. He, it turns out that, that he never, never right. showed the symptoms, but uh, uh, so let's see, it was Lovell Hayes and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So so they 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 took him out and, and replaced him uh, with a, with another astronaut. Right. And, you know, um, did anybody, you know, as we as we watched the movie, but was when I was watching it in the movie, but in, in real life for you, nobody thought they really could survive because they said the heat shield could have been really damaged. They Yeah, they didn't know. Yeah, they, they they weren't sure. Well, well, of course, you know, um, it, it it's really still to this day kind of amazing mm -hmm. to me. So the so many things had to to go right for them, or or things that could have gone wrong. I mean, they the, things like, like for example, what they had to uh, uh, the uh, oxygen tank that exploded was in the command module where they, they normally would would be spending all their time until they got to the moon but so they had to 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 shut literally shut down everything in the command module trying to salvage as much uh you know oxygen as as they could for when they needed to get back in it to 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 come home and land in the in the ocean for the splashdown so they so they they used they the three of them went into the uh, lunar module as a as a lifeboat uh and so they had never e even in you know uh practicing uh, uh simulations on the ground literally completely shut down the command module and then turned it back on so they weren't sure everything was going to come back on when they and so they 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 actually literally like you know flipped one switch at a time you know just kind of crossing their fingers and sure enough it all worked but uh, uh, another uh, interesting thing uh, when not they didn't know about the heat shield, they weren't sure. You know, it certainly could have been damaged in the explosion. And so when they came home, you know, they may after so many things they had to 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 fix and take care of and figure out how to 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 get them back home and jettisoned the the lunar module. So now they're back back in the command module and ready to splash mm -hmm. down into to the ocean, and you know, hoping that the heat shield is going to uh, be okay. Uh, it took um, you can it took four minutes for for anybody to hear from them. Well, yeah. So there's a time when during the maximum heat heating that that you can't have any communications uh, because of there's there's so much so much heat, and so there's a a time and they they usually have it down to like a few seconds. You know they know when uh, they can expect the communications to resume. And I don't remember if it was four minutes, but it was it was it was a, a couple minutes where there was nothing, and so they the mission control people were worried. You know, oh my God, we lost them. You mm -hmm. know, after all of that, and and again, I don't remember now exactly what the technical reason for it was, but but uh, they finally they finally made uh, you know re reestablished communications, and oh my gosh, what a happy day that was in mission control. Wow, amazing! And I remember you telling me that. They um, shut down. They closed all the doors and locked the doors during the yeah. Apollo thirteen words, right? Well, it, it, at least when the accident first happened, you, you know, yeah, it's it's like okay, you know, uh, nobody nobody comes in and nobody leaves until we figure out what's going on here. And, right. And yeah, a, a couple of interesting things about that movie because uh, one of the uh, the flight directors 
uh, Gene Kranz, uh, a you know, legendary flight director, one of NASA's first, um, uh, and, and he's he he wrote a book. He called it uh, because there was a in the movie they for just for you know drama they came up with this line that uh, uh, failure is not an option. He never actually said that. That was just a, <laughs> that was just a line written into the movie script for you know again for for extra drama. Right. But you know he he kind of became known for it just because of the movie and so he wrote a book well actually he has two books now i just published another one i i bought a couple of months ago and the name of his book is is uh, uh you know failure is not an option mm -hmm. and, and 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 he's even signed a couple of things for me and he signs things failure is not an option so that i've always thought that was kind of interesting you know that is interesting i did not he's know known that. for something that he never actually said it was just right. it was in the movie right so my next question is um and you can correct me. I heard the International Space Station is going to be de destroyed. I mean, not me, not okay. I know everybody's going to oh, be yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. But I heard there's going to be a new International Space Station going to be built. Is that correct? And when is that going to happen? Well, well you, 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 yes and no. Uh, yeah. So I think I've heard 2032, something like that. And, and of course, by that time, the space station will have been at least when I started it, you know, over 30 years old. And, you know, it's all right. I mean, it's already for a few years has started, you know, I mean, it's, it's been flying. I think the first astronauts finally uh, went on board after it was complete enough for somebody to actually live there in, in 2000. So it's been 23 years now already. And, you know, things are failing. In fact, there's a spacewalk uh, day after tomorrow to replace some uh, equipment on the outside of the, the space station. But so so in 20, I think, again, the, what I heard was 2032, they will, uh, you know, uh, finally say, OK, that's enough. Uh, and and we'll deorbit it so that it crashes down into the uh, Pacific Ocean somewhere. Uh, and so there is a, a private company, you know, commercial uh, industry, um, uh, axiom that I've heard talking about maybe even trying to 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 save you know disconnect some of the modules on the the NASA's International Space Station uh, that they can use to to help build their own so mm -hmm. again I, I have heard that there's again this would be something that NASA is doing because we're still I say we <laughs> I've been retired for almost seven years but I'm still you know very heavily involved um, uh, we're worried now about the, the Artemis program and going back to the moon and, and establishing a, a base on the moon and then going to Mars. Right. Uh, but so it would be a, you know, a private uh, company that uh, if, if there is another space station to, to take the place of the International Space Station, uh, it would be mm -hmm. a private industry doing that on their own. And I and I noticed that a lot the the newer space shuttle launch <laughs> that recently happened a couple of years ago. Um, it's just like the Apollo mission that uh, astronauts sit in this little oh, tube well, and and they go up. It, 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 it's about one and a half times as the the Orion, which is the the capsule that is taking the place of the Apollo capsule, mm -hmm. is is actually about one and a half times as large, and and it's so it it uh, holds four people instead of three. Uh, people call it uh, Apollo on steroids, um, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, yeah, very very similar. So who, uh, who if, pardon me, who I'm designed? Sorry. I'm sorry, pardon me. Who designed it? Was it NASA or was it someone else? Oh, well, well, yeah. So well, so NASA, yeah. Uh, the certainly all of Apollo was was designed by NASA. It it wasn't built by NASA. NASA contracted with, you know, Boeing and Rockwell and and Lockheed Martin Marietta and and those kind of companies to actually build it. But NASA you know, basically gave them the drawings and, and design and said, go build this for us. And so I, I assume you're well aware that in the last, you know, certainly five, 10 years, you know, SpaceX and, and Blue Origin and mm -hmm. there's all, mm -hmm. all kinds of commercial, it's one of the largest, you know, fastest growing industries in the country. You know, all kinds of uh, private companies now getting involved in in space, space exploration. You know, I, I mentioned a, a Axiom wanting to build their own space station, and and uh, uh, 
So uh, well, now, now I've, I've lost track of what, what the question was. <laughs> no, it, I was just talking about, you know, the... Um, oh, yeah, who designed it? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, that's who what I was about it? to yeah. say. My mind went blank, too, because this, yeah. everything yeah. that you're saying is so intriguing. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I get off on these long-winded answers and I forget what the question was, <laughs> especially at, at my age. My memory is not what it used to be. Um, but but yeah, so I th and, and so uh, Orion uh, was also designed by NASA and, and it, it was obvious that the Apollo capsule worked well. Uh, and so, you know, they just, hey, let's just make it a little larger and up, up, obviously updated the, the uh, uh, you know, interior and and avionics and and all of those things uh you know, let's fit four people instead of three mm -hmm. and, and and uh uh but yeah the you know the the design itself certainly worked back then and no reason why it wouldn't work today right and um another topic is do you believe um because people are curious about this as well do you believe eventually that um we as a human being will be able to live on Mars, I, yes, I, 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 you know that that's a, that's a really good question. You know, I, I mean, if if we do well, so and so, you know, you, you might know NASA's looking for other. They call them exoplanets. You know, other planets out in the universe that are kind of similar to to Earth, and that you know maybe. They have an atmosphere, and and you know they're mm. not too hot and not too cold, and that kind of thing. That you know, that the human race might be able to live on someday if we if we can get there. You know, because they're, they're all any that have been identified so far and, so far away. Pardon me, and I heard that going to Mars would take a very very long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's so 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 you know a couple of problems. Well, actually, a bunch of problems. So one is what I was starting starting to get at there is 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 Mars really basically doesn't have any atmosphere. So so if you're going to live there, you're going to you know be in a some kind of habitat and and to go outside, you're going to have to have a spacesuit on. You know, it's not like you're going to just wander around or go out on you know take a walk or go for a picnic or ride your bike or anything. You know, you're going to be wearing a, you have to wear a spacesuit to just like on the moon. You know, so that's that's one big problem, and 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 another one is is getting there in the first place. And right, some people ask, you know, well, how long does it take to get to Mars? And and the answer is it depends. And what I mean by that is that you know, with the the planets, you know, uh, orbiting the the sun, and they don't orbit at the same; they're not the same distance away, and they orbit at different speeds. Mm -hmm. And so you have to time it so that you know that at the point where they're the 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 nearest each other to to get there in the shortest period of time and that's still like six months or so wow if you if you do it at a different time it could be nine months or, or mm -hmm. something like that and so that's a really long trip yeah, and it is NASA has not figured out how to how to do that yet i, I mean right. in terms of you know first of all just things like you know, however many people is going to be two or three like you know four or, uh and you have enough food and water and you know six months is a long time to be mm -hmm. you know, in that little area. small capsule or whatever we're and, riding and, in. and yeah and you can't sit you know even even the communications uh, you know i think on mars and i don't remember it's 14 seconds or something like that if, if you just to try to you know the moon is close enough that you can you can have communications back and forth almost just like talking on the telephone but millions and millions of miles away on mars you 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 speak into the microphone and you have to wait about 14 or 15 seconds for them to even hear it wow. and then if they say something you know it's another 14 to 15 seconds to get the answer so you know that's that's something that i mean that's just physics and there's nothing you can mm -hmm. do about that to, you know yeah, to there's really quick. nothing um yeah. now about you and i don't know um but a lot of people maybe are wondering do you regret, and you can correct me, do you regret trying to go to space, trying to be an astronaut? Oh, oh well, no. Well, so, so actually, I, I never personally tried to be 
an astronaut. Well, that's my next question to follow up. Do you, did you oh, oh, do you oh, regret not oh, trying not to doing, be? Oh, oh, I thought you were asking. Do no, I? No, that was part of the no, question. I never, but I never did. <laughs> and, right, but do you, do you regret? I'm sorry. Correction. Do you regret trying to be an astronaut? Do you wish you tried when you were younger? Oh, I see. No, no. You know, uh, certainly. Over my career, I, I got to know and become friends, and still today, am, am good friends with with uh, many of them. And so, you know, and, and it kind of it it takes a special person uh, to be an astronaut. You know, they they th sometimes people wonder, you know, well, or you know, what's their biggest fear? Or you know, people assume that their biggest fear is 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 dying you know being killed mm -hmm. and, and we lost you know well, we uh apollo one back in 1968 there were right. three astronauts uh, sitting on the launch pad just going through a simulation and the fire you know killed all three of them instantly and then we and had the chandler and, and the challenger in 1986 and then columbia in 2003 so that's 17 astronauts killed you know um uh, and so it, you know, certainly can happen any any time. But the 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 funny thing, it's not that funny. But the interesting thing is that, uh, and I've talked to and heard many of them, many of the astronauts talking about this. They're not afraid of dying. I mean, no one wants to die, but right. they're not afraid of it. You know, if if they were afraid of dying, they wouldn't be an astronaut. You know. And and I I remember hearing Scott Carpenter who was one of the original seven astronauts. You know. 50 years ago said you know hey we've we've decided that uh it's worth the risk you know mm -hmm. what we're doing uh what we're learning you know what we're doing for the country and in, in the space exploration it's worth the risk of dying you know just yeah yeah uh and so so what astronauts most of them i've talked to what they say what their biggest fear is is they don't want to be the one who screws things up. You know, it's it's always, you know, whether it's two or three or four or seven, you know, on a space shuttle or in the ISS, you know, everyone has their job and responsibility, you know, whether it's docking with the space station or moving the, you know, remote arm to grab a satellite out of the, you know, in the old, old days, out of the payload bay of the shuttle. Uh, you know, they they don't want what their biggest fear is, is that they don't do their job well enough and, mm -hmm. and they screw up the mission and it's not successful. It's 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 not afraid of dying. It's right. it's, it's letting their their crew members down. Mm -hmm. And I know that famous. Uh, not, well, he's not famous. Well, I guess he is. But he is now a senator uh, from Arizona. And he he also um, went to space and he uh, talked Jake about Garn? it. And, um, I yeah, can't I think, think Jake Garn was his name. Yeah. Yes, darn. And he he went to space. He's he's currently a senator right now from Arizona. But I research about oh, him. Oh no, a Kelly. That's oh, yeah, oh. Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Oh, and, okay. I'm thinking yes, of the and, old old. Um, he he yeah. can, he um, occasionally talks about it on TV on MSNBC, CNN, and all that news station. But he talks about um, he doesn't talk much in that about now because he's in politics. But yeah. he talks about back then about him being in space, and mm -hmm. I remember that um. The incident with his wife in Arizona got shot, and he talked about um, he wasn't so sure that he wanted to go to space because he he felt like, um, and I could be wrong, but he didn't want to leave his wife because his wife was going through all this treatment, and the only thing he he remembers was his wife was telling him, "Go for it, just go," yeah. and I think you know. For me personally, I've never experienced it like he did. You know, if I if that if I had a family member like that, it's a hard decision, right? You know, you yeah. you really want to go to space, but you yeah. have a family member that's in ICU and really serious mm -hmm. condition, and you had to decide, right? You mm -hmm. if you don't go, that could be your last opportunity yeah. to go into space, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you you know if you if you go, you make it. But you're going to be worried about your loved one on the earth, and and, and it was just powerful. It was like they did a documentary on CNN. I watched it, and it was you know her telling him, "Go, just go," you know. And 
he went, you know, and it's yeah. just, you know, it's just the, he talked of the story about being in space and going through things and, um, you know, kind of he, he I don't know how what he said, but he forgot about about what was happening because she was going through physical therapy the whole entire time she was he was yeah. in space. But um, never went back to space then. But, you know, it's powerful testimony. Like you were saying, you know, you it's also a, you, it, a decision you have to make. You know, it's like yeah. if you yeah. if you yeah. don't go, this could be your last opportunity. But mm-hmm. if you go, you this is it. So mm-hmm. and you're right. And it, it is it's a you know, you hear all these stories from all these astronauts and and they love it. And they see mm-hmm. the earth and they see oh, all yeah. this stuff from space. And it's like, wow, you know. Yeah. And so that's the, the reason I asked you, because, you know, you worked in NASA. You've been there since 18 years old. And, I, you know, and I was just wondering, um, people were wondering why you didn't try. <laughs> yeah. So, we, so we were, yeah, it was Mark Kelly. He used to live just around the, the block for me uh back actually it was his first marriage and uh he he moved away and you know got married again but Mm -hmm. uh, um yeah um you know i i but but you know i i just feel like certainly getting to to work at nasa and and with the astronauts has been i mean i i just i absolutely loved my job you know uh, so I, 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 it's hard to to regret not doing something whenever it was whenever whatever it was that I did get to do I absolutely loved right right so I I don't know that I would have loved that <laughs> anymore so, but yeah it's interesting too and you're talking about uh, I've heard enough astronauts say so Nicole Stott is one she's a she's become a good friend of mine and she she talks about how you know and, and you know. She, an astronaut for for a number of years and and before she flew for the first time and and you know she's training with the crew and some of the crew has been in space before and all of her astronaut friends that have been in space before and they tell her you know what it's like and she sees video and takes and you know sees photos and everything Mm -hmm. and but she said i remember her saying when she actually got up there you know into space at the space station uh and, and 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 looked out the window it was like a religious experience she said there was mm-hmm. nothing it didn't matter what she had been told what she had seen nothing prepared her for how she felt seeing with her own eyes you know the earth down to the little blue ball down below so and, you know and that's wow. a lot that, you know that's what a lot of people talks about yeah. um you know my another my next question for you is if you could go back and live when you're 18 years old would you, and I, I believe I know your answer, but would you try to become an astronaut? <sighs> wow. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to speculate, but if I knew back then what I knew today, I, I, I probably would. I probably would have tried. Uh, you know, because I really, I mean, again, even growing up in the community where, where you know, I was in school, I I played on the middle school junior high football team with the the sons of Frank Borman and Scott Carpenter, you know, and and uh, Gus Grissom who died in Apollo One. I'm still good friends today with his sons Mark and Scott, and I, you know, grew up with with astronaut families and and the kids of astronauts, and but it's still back then. You know, I, I guess I never really thought, wow, you know, I, I mean, this is the Apollo days and there weren't, there weren't that, certainly not like in the shuttle days when they were, you know, going up fairly regularly. There were just a, you know, a, a handful of guys who had had flown and they were, and they were all, you know, military guys and, you know, mm-hmm. I, I guess it, it wasn't as, uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it, you know, uh, didn't seem all that as, as great as it was. Now, right. but it seems to me today you know just yeah i was you know like a military fighter pilot you know <laughs> yeah yeah it was, that was no problem you know but uh yeah much more glamorous isn't the right word but but uh yeah you know just uh, exciting and and uh 
you know, I mean, I mean, people living up there, you know, mm -hmm. back when I was growing up, you just went up into space and came back down. Right. Uh, or, you know, for a few days. Uh, but, but yeah, if, if I thought I could go spend six months, you know, living on a space station, 250 miles, I, I'm the, yeah, that, that's, that would, that would be cool. Right. And that's, it's still cool. There's a lot of famous, uh, I mean, some famous and all the astronauts are still living in Houston and, you know, and you have, you get to meet these people and get to tell people's stories about space, about space mm -hmm. shuttles. And, you know, for you, you've been through, um, you know, the Apollo missions and the space shuttle, um, you know, you, I mean, unfortunately, and it's so sad, but you witnessed, uh, you experienced this, the two space shuttle accidents and then you, and then you get to live through this new um, space mission. So you, you've been through generations of this and it, and, it, and it, it's, it's amazing that you are telling stories and telling people about space, about NASA and the testimony about what it's like and what it's about and, you know, how hard it is to be in the, in this industry, in the space industry. And, you know, um, cause I, I've seen videos of people who've, um done training and i know you haven't but again of them going underwater and they have to they were in this oxygen they try not to panic and they're trying to put things together and i assume in their little uh, the inside this building and they they have to try to figure out the oxygen you know, all this stuff me personally i probably freak out in the water because you're underwater wearing all these suits and you're like wait what am i doing so it's 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 just the training to be an astronaut they don't they don't talk about it but it's yeah. hardcore oh, oh oh yeah you know uh i'm thinking back i don't know if they still do it but certainly in the apollo days and i think it's still yeah in the shuttle days they had to go through survival training i mean they would they would put you out in the you know in the forest you know with nothing but a you know a backpack and a compass and you know a few matches maybe and you know you had to survive for six days and and uh and you know th things like that, uh, and, and yeah, you know you're right. It's hard enough. I mean, it's almost impossible today to even be selected for the astronaut program because, and I don't know if you know, but when you're just for example, uh, when I the last year I was there, the last astronaut class we picked, we had eighteen thousand three hundred applications. Now some of those where we know people just wanted to, they knew they had no chance, but they wanted to submit the application so they could get a letter back from NASA that said, you know, sorry, thanks for your application to the astronaut program, but, you know, we didn't select you. So just, they just wanted to have that letter. But, you know, they weren't, you know, all of them like that. So out of 18,300 people, we picked, you know, 12 or 14. So that's less than one out of a thousand. And, and, so, and so even if you're one of those, you're not an astronaut. You you're an astronaut candidate. We, mm. we call, call them ASCANs, <laughs> short for astronaut candidate. They don't right. like being called ASCANs, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, so there's there's about two years of training, and you're right. Especially in today's world, you have to learn how to speak Russian. You, you know because there are, you share the the space station with Russians and you know and you have to learn how to do spacewalks and and uh you know have to do learn how how everything works because and you know you have just so, even things like you know going to the bathroom in space is is different brushing your teeth is different you can't take a shower you have to take sponge baths and, you know, so the eating is different so just you know eating sleeping drinking brushing your teeth going to the bathroom you know, it, everything's different and mm -hmm. so you have to learn how to do all of that stuff. And so it, it takes about two years before. And if you, you pass and most of them do, then you're actually an astronaut. And then you have to wait a couple of years for the first opportunity to, to actually be assigned to a mission right. and get to in space. Wow. So it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And my next question is, do you have to be a certain height? You, the no, not really. Well, I, I mean, there are uh, size limits. Uh, I think you can't be taller. I think it's six three, maybe six two. 
if you're if you're taller than that, you just don't fit in the capsule and don't fit in the the spacesuits and all of that mm -hmm. thing. But you know, most people are not taller than six two, and I think you have to also be at least five six. You know, for for women, I I think that's right. Some something right. like that because you could also be too small. But again. Well, I don't know. I was going to say most women are, are five, six or more, but that may not be true, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Well, you know, I, I do appreciate, you know, it, telling us, the audience, about space and, uh, and the NASA program and everything. And um, thank you again for uh, coming on my show. I appreciate it. You know, I would love to have you back again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's do it a, a, a fourth time. I'm, you know, it's it's been, in fact, I went back and looked. It was, we did it in 2021 and then we did it in 2022 and now we're doing it in 2023. So, hey, anytime you're ready in 2024, just let me know. And I'm happy. I, I could talk for hours. <laughs> right. And, you know, I, I may have you back before 2024. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it's already it's already almost November. So, <laughs> well, you know, um, I love having you on my show because um, the audience wants to know more about space. They want to know more about how to become an astronaut, and you know where they can apply. Yeah, and yeah, we could we could talk more about that. I could talk a little bit about uh, you know. Uh, because uh, you know I, I I've been asked that a lot even though I wasn't one uh, you know certainly kind of kind of tangentially involved in the the process and knew what was going on and how it worked and and I've heard from enough of them uh, you know one question people ask is you know well what what should I study or what degree should I have and there's there's mm -hmm. no right answer for that you know I mean just real quickly uh, I won't give you the long story but no it's okay you know. Uh, because people think seem to think that well you know I, I need to pick aeronautical engineer or, or something like that and that's that's absolutely wrong and and the the main thing about that is you know is as difficult as it may sound or you know to be told this you know again we were talking about it's not almost impossible you know one in a thousand chance of, of being selected uh to be an uh, an astronaut candidate and become an astronaut and so you don't want to you know change or you know set your life on a course with with a, a degree plan that you think is going to help you become an astronaut and then if you don't become one well then you're kind of stuck you know so mm -hmm. so the advice is just find something that you're passionate about and I even kind of hate to say that because sometimes you don't you can learn a passion but you know right. you, might, you might be in college and and hear you know go to a class or hear somebody talking and oh hey that looks kind of interesting you know change your major so it's it's not even like you have to decide in high school that this is what I'm going to do you know find something that you're going to be happy with and and they're interested in and maybe passionate about and or you think you might actually enjoy doing for the rest of your life because the the way you get picked in in many cases is that you're good at something you know, you've been successful in, in, you know, this career that you've taken. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, again, people ask, well, what should I study in college? Well, there's no answer to that. You know, <laughs> it depends on you. Right. And my, my I forgot, I'm going to ask you this. Is there a age limit to join NASA? No, I think the answer is no. I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Now, now the reality may be, you know, that, that's just another if you're 50 years old you know the re it's tough enough you know but that's that's kind of a strike against you you know mm -hmm. when you're competing with with you know 20 and 30 right year olds uh for for something that you know again even if you're selected it may be five years before you get to fly so yeah that's uh that that would be tough that's a good question thank you mm -hmm. and well thank you for coming on my show mr herb I appreciate you. You're more than welcome to come back on my show. And I can't wait to have you back. Yeah, sounds great. I enjoy talking with you. Just let me know anytime. I'm happy to do it. I appreciate it. you. Okay. I will talk to you soon. Okay. All Thanks. right. Bye. Bye.